Hello, my name is Joe Bandle and I am the last Rosicrucian. Today we're going to talk about the search for ancient roots. In particular, we're looking at or looking for the roots of true mysticism. But in, in the meantime, we also have to talk about the roots of what I call atheism and the roots of what I would call the false prophets. Uh, I'm using those terms just to describe three separate groups of ideologies that existed just about the same time. Now it, it just so happens that I recently uh, I was interested in uh, genetics. Uh, I had a DNA sample done to find out my family tree, my, my history. And I belong to haplogroup G-M201. Now this was considered the first immigration group to come out of Africa and it happened about uh, 13,000 years ago somewhere thereabouts now this group of people actually settled in an area that goes from Iran Turkey all the way up through the Caucasus into the Ukraine, maybe into Russia, over into Bavaria, southern Germany, and even around into the northern mountains of Italy, as well as at some point stretching into India. Now these people settled in this area uh, from 21,000 years ago, or 21,000 to 8,000 BC. That's when they came in. So they were actually the first inhabitants of this region, roughly described, I'll call it the Balkans and, and stuff like that. Uh, they were Neolithic farmers and they built some of the first civilizations. Now, the Aryan group of invaders, or the Kurgan invasions is one, one of the, that they're called, they began about 5,000 BC into the same area. But the original inhabitants had been living there for well over 3,000 years, probably maybe 13,000 to 3,000 years before the Kurgans or the Aryans came in. Uh, and so the Ary so I want to make a clear point. The Aryans are not the people that we're talking about. In fact, the Aryans with their warlike beliefs, their male patriarchal dominated society, identify as the group that I call the false prophets. And we will see as these videos go along that that particular group has an ideology that will fit the category that I'm talking about, which is false prophets as opposed to the true mystic who combines the non-physical spiritual realities with physical reality. Now, into the same area, about the year uh, 1500 to 1000 BC, the Semites came in also. The Semites uh, obviously uh, 
were led by Moses out of Egypt and they came into into this into the southern regions of this area now these Jewish people these Semites were highly literate in fact all of these people were highly literate I'll get into that um, but those this group of people the Semites I am going to call the atheists uh, because their beliefs were very intellectual but they did not really recognize an afterlife the Jewish religion does not really recognize an afterlife which is a metaphor or an ex a spiritual existence that way they have their own type of beliefs that even though it's a religion I'm going to call it somewhat atheistic as opposed to the true mystics this means um, Babylon the city of Babylon uh, well before I get there I'm going to say that the original inhabitants that we're talking about that came in first that actually share the I share DNA with the, my ancestors if in India they were called the Dravidians now I don't really know what they were called in this other than the Balkans uh, and these uh, East European areas at this point uh, but that that's that's the people they were and it's interesting to know that these people were mostly goddess worshipers they worshiped nature uh, they held the the feminine as sacred and they had partnership type thing where the men and the women actually lived reasonably on equal terms on reasonably equal terms uh, so they were not male dominated they were not necessarily female dominated the female was revered because it was the female that brought life and Gaia and nature was considered female because Gaia brought life and the goddess also brought death because life and death went hand in hand and in those days birth was also a dangerous thing because many women died during childbirth it was a dangerous thing and there were a lot of infants that died at birth so the idea of birth and death going together the two sides of the goddess and the male as in service to the goddess to help out that seemed to be a very dominant thing and it is also how the energy dynamics of soul development work through the exchanging of tantric sexual energies it's interesting that the Dravidians in India retained or that's where a lot of the tantric practices and beliefs seem to have originated but also in Crete the Minoan culture was very open and free about 
sexuality, human sexuality, inequality, and they had a very, very modernized uh, civilization that had running water. Uh, it was the art, the arts were extremely developed, highly developed. Uh, and again, uh, the same equality of the male and the female in social roles. And they were not warlike. They were not massive fortifications or things like that. They were mainly uh, farmers and agrarians. Now I can tell that this subject is going to take a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So I'm going to have to do another video on this, but I'm going to just go over some of the notes here. To I think basically we got the main idea that it was around 5000 BC. You had three groups of people that all congested, converged into this area that we're talking about. The original inhabitants, who I'm descended from, uh, that were peaceful agrarians or farmers. Uh, and then the, the Aryans that were warlike and basically decimated the place, took it over. And a little bit later on came uh, the Jewish people to come in with a third influence. And all of these groups of people were literate. They had a written language. They were literate. And that literacy is an important concept that we're going to be talking about later because it was to the, the invention of literacy, the invention of reading and writing was an important evolutionary place that allowed for a new type of religion to exist for the first time. So we'll be getting into that next time. This is all I have time to cover today. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Please feel free to comment, visit my website, and if possible, share this with others or donate. Sharing is as good as donating. Thank you.